Well hello I'm Chris and this is my electric cooling fan wiring video. Now I was going to do an installation on my 70 Chevelle but I realized that all these fans are going to be a custom installation to your car no matter what. Now what all these fans do share is the way you're going to wire them up in your car. So I'm not affiliated with them I just want you to know what controller we're talking about and these are the 410 part number. The point of this video is I'm going to show you how to wire up the double relay system you see out there the triple relay you see but kind of the idea is if you don't really understand how that works or don't care to go ahead and buy this you can't go wrong with it the more i study it the more i like it so the first thing you got to understand is this four pin relay if you don't understand it watch my relay explain video this has to be fully understood okay so 85 is grounded and to activate this switch we usually energize 86 but this situation is a little bit different because now we're using a temperature sensor to turn on our relay. On the cooling system, our sensor is going to turn it on. So we don't turn it on from hot. We have hot already running to 86. And when this thing gets 180 degrees, it turns on or completes the circuit and grounds out. So this is the four pin. We're going to call it basic relay. You just need to understand that hot is supplied to 86. Our sensor grounds out turning this on. Okay, so now on the two speed setup, we're gonna call this the train relay. This is your five pin with 87A. So on the train relay, instead of the electromagnet turning it on, it's actually switching it over. So when this thing's plugged up, you got 30 to 87A straight power. And whenever you energize it, you trigger it on, it's gonna switch it like a railroad track. Okay, and I'm only calling it a train relay to help you memorize this kind of stuff. As soon as you can explain it, call it by its correct name. You got power coming in at 30, just like a train track, it's connected straight to 87. When you energize the electromagnet, you're gonna pull the switch over here to 87 like a train track switching tracks and power now is going to travel to 87. now this one can get super confusing and typically this is common this is normally closed normally open just remember it as a train station for right now so we're going to wire it up in real life but i do wiring diagrams in case people want to screenshot them so this is the double breaker double relay you see advertised we got two 30 amp breakers we got 10 gauge wire running to two four pin regular style automotive relays power runs into 30 on both of them the fans have the black wires grounded 87 connected right into the fans so if you're trying to screenshot that's step one on your double relay okay so this is a wiring chart just Google it. You'll find charts like this to know exactly how many amps and what wire size to run. I run everything on 10 gauge because it's heavy duty and I don't have to worry about anything. Okay, so the second step is you gotta figure out how you wanna turn your fans on. Now, both of these fans pull about 22 amps. So you don't just wanna turn them both on instantly with a toggle switch. The common setup is the first one is turned on 180, grounds out the switch. And then the second one uses a manual toggle override. So you have to turn this one on, I guess, when your car is getting hot. And then the other way is you get a 180 sensor for the first fan to come on and then a 200 degree for your second fan to come on. Okay, so if I was going to pick one of these, I would pick this one. So when we're wiring in our sensors, remember we run it off of 85 where it grounds out. In that case, we run power straight to 86 off of that terminal now if you want to have one of them on a toggle switch this is grounded but see now this switch is going back to the dash of your car and you're getting power from somewhere inside there so this is the high speed low speed it uses three relays it just has an extra five pin relay with the 87a on it now this one is super complicated i'm going to try to simplify the wiring we are going to wire it up in real life please try to understand this one because it's complicated but it makes so much sense let's check it out okay so real fast we got to understand what in series means 
Okay, so if you were gonna run some lights, the correct way would be to wire them like that. You gotta tap into the wires. We got 100% of each light. Now in series, we got the three lights, but this time we run the wire like this both 12 volts the same wire but since we run them in series we split that voltage up three ways that's supposed to be 100 percent 33 percent so you're you're splitting up the voltage so this is our two speed the first step is wiring up low okay so this is low speed remember we're running it in series so that we share 12 point whatever volts between the two motors so they're running at half speed or low speed okay so we got our battery running to our breaker we're only supplying power to this relay right now. So 87 is gonna run straight to our motor. Now our black wire or ground, we're connecting it over here to 30. The railroad tracks are directing it over here. Now 87A is, is our red wire back to this one. And then we have our ground right there. So we're gonna jump 86 straight back to there. And then 85 needs to be grounded through our sensor. So we would typically use a 180 like this one for the low circuit. Okay, step one, wire up the low speed first. So for high speed, we're taking a wire to our breaker again and we're running it over to this relay. Now it's the same thing, we're using another sensor so we can go ahead and jump it like that. So we got this five pin relay in the center. It's gonna need power to 86 too. So we're gonna just keep it on the same circuit. 87, you're just gonna run it back over here to ground. And this 87 is going back and spliced into that hot. So then both of those 85s are ran back together to a 200 degree or high temp switch. Screenshot step one and screenshot step two. And I promise you it'll make the wiring so much easier. If you buy a variable speed control or anything like this, it's gonna have your wiring diagram already. So let's get these things wired up in real life and see how they work. Okay, so we got power coming in right here. So power coming out, going straight to 30. So since our temperature switches are grounding out 85, we go ahead and run power from here straight to 86 on both sides. Okay, so on the double relay setup, each relay is for each motor. Okay, so one relay per motor, so we're wiring each relay to the red wire. Now we're not gonna be able to run temperature switches, but these are gonna simulate our 180 and 200. So we already have power to our 86 straight off of there. These will normally ground out, so these are connected to 85. Since we're not in a car, we gotta run grounds to everything. So these are the grounds to our motors. We're wire nutting them in. Now we're putting them with the wire nut. Do not do this on your car. So then all of our grounds, we just run back to that. We're gonna turn it on 180 and it's gonna turn the fan off full freaking blast. And then when we get 200 degrees, Okay, so those fans are not playing around. They are pulling a huge amount of freaking air. Okay, so you see all that work perfect. We're using two very small circuits that simply are grounding out to turn on a high load, high amp circuit for our cooling fans. Now this works 100%. So now we're gonna do the two speed. And if you're new at this or never seen this one or thought it was too complicated, Pay attention to it because the more I mess with this one, the more I like it. So this one, we just add the five pin relay and we're gonna do the low speed first. So that's wiring up low speed to run our fans in series. Let's go ahead and turn it on and check it out real quick. So we reach 180 degrees, it grounds us out. Okay, step two is hard to explain. You just gotta read the wiring diagram. Let's just hook it up. So we're driving our car, it hits 180 degrees. It's gonna turn on low speed, half power. Keep driving, we hit 200 degrees. We cool down. That sensor 
disengages, we go back to low speed. Now our temperature drops down to 170, our coolant fans shut off. But you really need to study the motors and make sure the motors you buy can be run at half speed like that because you, you can damage some electrical motors running them at low voltage. So just check that out. I'm pretty sure these will, I'm, I have to probably call them and find that out. But that low speed, high speed, that's really, really nice. Point of this one, why I like it so much is because whenever you hit low speed, you're not pulling all those amps. You're only pulling like 20 amps. And those two fans running at half speed will freaking cool your car down for sure. All right, so the Flexilite variable speed control, we're just gonna wire it up like the diagram to kind of give you an idea about the features it does have that I like. When you wire stuff up like this, you have to study this thoroughly read it like five or six times because i really don't know what's going to happen like let's say you hook one of these up wrong because there's no fuses on there probably just going to start making freaking uh burnt electrical smell so really really familiarize yourself if you're going to use that you can't play games if you wire that up wrong it's just going to burn something up and you can fix it this you're out 111 dollars. so okay so it comes with some high quality hardware kit comes with a fuse it comes with some high quality wire we're just going to use my wire for the demo okay so on these they're the fans are wired together you got to pay attention to pusher and puller this is a puller fan so black is purple red is to yellow so the first step of installation power from the battery through the fuse this is your main power coming in a main ground back to the battery over there wire your fans just make sure you don't uh, wire them backward okay so we got all the main wires hooked up this thing's got power ready to go now we need to wire up the little stuff that's going to turn our fans on okay this one uses a little probe that sticks into the radiator for like a temperature sensor we're not going to be able to hook that up right now we are going to turn them on though okay so it does use ignition on with the key we're simulating that with this going to number nine what the best feature of this controller is is that it has manual on and manual off now this is a single pole single throw switch your typical toggle switch now this has a feature of manual override on and manual override off so this is a single pole double throw switch make sure you get the right switch so it's off in the center and whatever's coming in on this wire it's going to connect it to this and then to these two so single pole double throw switch five for the kill and six for the override now this is very important if you're going to buy one of these this uses a negative signal do not run this to positive it's going to use a negative signal all right so we got that negative ran to our single pole double throw switch so we want this to be manual on so we're going to wire this to six okay so this is a manual kill switch we're going to see if we can get it to work okay so this controller also has a uh, ac activation either activated with the negative or positive we're going to activate it with uh, positive so we can kill it so we got this run hot we're going to use this to turn it on like if we we're turning the air conditioner on first thing we turn our ignition on now we're going to manually turn it on with a negative signal to number six so let's see if it comes on Okay, now we're going to turn the AC on. This is going to number eight positive, and it should turn our fans on. So AC is coming on. And now we're going to test the manual kill switch when we flick this this way. Kill switch is on right now. Kill the fans. Let's turn the kill switch off. Disconnect. Now we're turning the AC off. Now we're going to check that manual override again. Shut the 
car off. So the manual override stays on. Manual override off. So it does make a weird noise when they start up. It says something about sending 60% power so it doesn't have that, that huge amp draw. Either way, they seem to work fine. Okay, so if you're ordering this stuff, Flexilite does have its own switch. It's like a black toggle switch. Uh, don't put this in your freaking car, okay? Now, I'm not affiliated with Flexilite, so I guess I'm doing some advertising for them. This is a great product. If my daughter called me and said, hey, I want to put some cooling fans on my car, I would tell her to go buy this right here. 401 with the electric uh, variable speed controller. Man, you really can't go wrong with it. Okay, so I said I was going to go over some more stuff, but I'm super tired. This video took way longer to make than I thought. So if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.